All right, guys. We're ready for our four season sunroom, and Daddy's gonna get a rec room with refreshments. Oh no, we'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym. My gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room. Weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no, wait. A family hub. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation brochure from the premier manufacturer of Sunroom since 1975. More reasons for four seasons now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-928-7007. That's 800-928-7007. Call 800-928-7007 today. Wake up, Maggie. I think I got some Wake up, America. I think I got something to say to you. I love the United States of America, and I want you to love the United States of America too. Wake Up America Radio with Dr. A and Lubell is not a safe space, so enter at your own risk. You will be exposed to the truth, and we will endure the consequences. Now rest assured, Dr. A will not try to put his brain into your head. I will, however, motivate you to think and to use the analytical part of your brain that very few people want to use because it requires actual effort and actual work. Hey, welcome everybody to Wake Up America Radio with Dr. Randy Errington. And by the way, Lou Esposito, hopefully, is on the line. She is my producer, my sidekick. Uh, and I've given her the honorary tactical naval aviator call sign of wench. Uh, those of you that listen to the show know why I call her wench, because she doesn't take crap from anybody. Uh, wench, are you there? I am, and I'm a by the way. I've turned into a by the way. <laughs> you, have a, a, you have a by the way to give me? or No, that's how you introduce me now, is by the oh, way. B- by the way. <laughs> well, you know what, folks, without, without Lou Esposito... You wouldn't be able to hear Dr. A. I count on her every time we do this show. And right. I found out just uh, we were talking offline. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she's been cheating on me. She has been uh, producing other uh, radio stars and uh, without my knowledge, but she's in high demand. So I'm very fortunate to have her uh, working with me. I had the pleasure and- of producing uh, Stacy Lennox and Michael Loftus. When JD was unavailable a couple of times, and it was a, it was a fun show to produce. Michael Loftus is a phenomenal comedian. On the right, you know, there's not a lot of comedians that are that are on the right. He's a wonderful libertarian, and I love the guy. He's great. I've heard a couple things he's done. I've uh, uh, seen uh, some tweets that he's put out, and he's uh, very intellectually humorous, and I like that. In- in- intelligence and humor go together sometimes hand in hand, and, and so you got to be in- in- intelligent to understand that humor, but I like that sort of, sort of stuff, as is uh, the other people on that show. They're very intellectually funny. So uh, I want to st- talk right now. Uh, this show is going to be uh, Tuesday uh, in uh, Philly which is today, and at 5 o'clock on WNJC 1360 as part of the Conservative Commandos radio network and Rick Trader, bless his heart. Uh, last week we had the Republican National Convention. This week we have in Philadelphia the ongoing Democratic National Chaos, I mean, pardon me, convention. Uh, now, as one who went out on a limb to say that the presidency was Donald Trump's to lose, I talked about this way back in uh, August, um, of last year when he announced, uh, I'm going to go further out on that limb and offer other people a saw by saying that not only will Donald Trump win the presidency, he will win the presidency in a landslide. Landslide? A landslide. I don't necessarily mean a blowout uh, of Nixon McGovern proportions, but by a significant margin. I teach my students, uh, and when I teach the presidency, that it doesn't matter who the nominee is for the Democratic Party, Democrat Party, or Republicans. It could be you, 
Lou is a Republican, me is a Democrat. We're both going to get 40% right off the bat. What's up for grabs, if you want to look at it that way, is the t- sort of the 20% in the middle of those that uh, claim to be independents. And if you get yeah, well, 60 some... 40, if you get 60 40, that's my definition of a landslide. Students always say, Dr. A, what's a landslide? I said 60 40. If you get 60% of the vote, that's a landslide. But some okay. of the more recent polls um, and, and studies show that, they're, that the, the, the people who identify as independent now, it's more like 40%. Well, the problem with that is people that identify as independent often lean heavily one way or the other. So they'll so still vote I, that I way. Be, if, if I, you know, uh, become an independent, I'll be an independent, registered independent, but I'll lean towards the right side, Republican side, okay, gotcha. the conservative side. Okay. okay, so that's kind of a misnomer. I'll buy that. Um, uh, let's see here. So, so I say he's going to win by a, a significant margin. So let me ask uh, you even, a question. Yes. Do you believe that it's going to be a landslide because Hillary wasn't indicted, she's still the nominee, yet she's got all these things hanging over her head and the fact that these Bernie supporters are so disgruntled, they are far more disgruntled than the Never Trump crowd was. Uh, I choose option E, all of the above, all of the plus, above. plus things you can't, you haven't seen yet. Okay. Um, even right. in the last week, the polls are beginning to show this, this, this landslide. Uh, but now everything sort of is intensifying with that chaotic uh, first night uh, that took place in Philadelphia for well, the that was Republican crazy, National Convention. It? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, the reason should be evident to uh, people that are you know intelligent enough to see the evidence. This is going to be Lou a national security election. Uh, I started by writing this uh, uh, script uh, before the horrifying horrifying news started coming in from Nice. And just recently, again, in Fran- Normandy, France, uh, all these different locations where it seems like every day now or every other day there is a M- Islamic terrorist attack. Germany, Lou, Mogadishu. Germany, Mogadishu. Lou, that is what we call world war. And those are campaigns. Those are uh, individual uh, Incidents of the war. That's what, how war is, is fought. Yeah, it's a guerrilla war. It, it, it's, it's no doubt a guerrilla war, but it is a world war without a doubt. Exactly. And, and people, people don't get it. They are so indoctrinated. Do you like that word? Well, Brainwash. you know, there's Pokemon Go that has their attention. I just download that on my iPhone. No, God. <laughs> and I try. I, I tried. It won't, it won't work if you're driving. you got to walk. <laughs> but, uh, it's it's kind of fun. Uh, but... I think the situation couldn't have been more obvious to those that are actually paying attention and taking their, their heads uh, out of their, uh, well, out of the sands, put it that way. As anyone paying the slightest attention knows, Islamic fundamentalism, we just said this, is at war with Western civilization. Lou, it's not just ISIS, but unfortunately, many continually metastasizing organizations that are based on what? The same Muslim ideology, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, recommended using a truck, as was employed by the Nice attack in the magazine Inspire. Uh, It was called, the article was entitled, The the Ultimate Mowing Machine. Do you know how MSNBC uh, initially characterized that uh, 84 deaths uh, there in Nice, France? Truck crash causes injuries. Can you believe that? Are these people that stupid? Or do they think we're that stupid? Maybe it's a combination of both. Barack Obama's response, Lou, to our uh, civilizational, existential enemy has been, in one word, a disaster. Why? You know what I say. He is one of them. He is an Islamo-communist. Because of our president's deep, uh, how should I put this, neurotic ambivalence about his own Muslim background, He is incapable of confronting, let alone naming, the evil of jihadism. Which means he has blood on his hands. He he and Valerie Valerie Jarrett, they have blood on their hands. Explain to the listeners who Valerie Jarrett is. Valerie Valerie Jarrett is the, she's the de facto president of the United States. She's his closest advisor. She's in the shadow. She is our shadow president. 
Where does she she's, come from? She's a she's Iranian, mm-hmm. and yeah. um, she is has a long history with Barack Obama. She, and, I mean, and I could go way back. I've studied this woman. Her housing, de, her housing development um, in I believe it was Chicago corporation that skimmed millions if not billions of dollars off of the federal government. I could go way back on this woman, but she is his closest advisor. She is our shadow president. I, I just saw um, Hillary's America, that Dinesh D'Souza movie. I, I recommend everybody go see it. Uh, I didn't really learn anything new, except about a woman named Ida B. Wells, a black woman uh, in, during the uh, presidency of uh, Andrew Jackson. Um, heroic young woman, young, young black African-American woman. Just you need to go just to see what she did, and I did learn that. But everything else I kind of already knew. But uh, it's a really good movie. And and uh, nowadays, um, they're they're not only stealing money from the rich corporations, they're stealing money from the poor people as well. The poor people as well. That Clinton Foundation, which we were to talk about in the last segment, uh, I had I had in mind to talk about that. Uh, is Valerie collecting Jarrett's all this been, money. Valerie well, yeah, Jarrett collecting... has been sp- stealing money from poor people since she has been as far back as I could trace her background. Well, they're 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 taking all this money mm-hmm. uh, into the Clinton Foundation to line the pockets of Bill and Hillary and uh, Chelsea, uh, and only about ten percent of the money is going to any kind of good use at all. They're 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 basically con men. They're they're criminals, and they're not. They the are first. basically criminals. Yeah, they're not the first. Um, back to uh, Barack uh, Obama. In reality, Mr. Obama made the problems that we're facing right now worse, and he and Mrs. Clinton both encouraged. Uh, if not facilitated, the rise of ISIS through their callous abandonment of Iraq and creating that uh, vacuum there for ISIS and those those uh, knucklehead uh, butchers to uh, fill. And uh, now you got them, the, the uh, Sunnis against the Shias, uh, against everybody, the Kurds, everybody else, uh, and fighting a world war against the West. Now, Mr. Obama's anointed successor, Mrs. Clinton, uh, as you know from reading my book, uh, Presidential Politics, Lecture Notes of a Lunatic Professor, Mrs. Clinton is a pathological liar and a psychopath. Uh, William Sapphire, back in 1996, in a New York Times article, called her a congenital liar. Uh, he said, who seems to have a little, have a little concept of the difference between right and wrong, as most of us do. That is a, de- a classic definition of a sociopath. Doesn't know the difference between right and wrong, and doesn't care about anybody but herself. That is, is Mrs. Clinton. I read that. You, that uh, in case anybody wonders what he meant by that, it was, it's pretty much he means that it's genetic. She was born that way. A well, she actually started off as a, a, a Goldwater girl. Huh? Did you, did you know she was a Goldwater girl in the beginning until she met yes. Saul Alinsky? Yes. Yeah, I did. So Alawinski is, is mentioned in that movie, by the way, by D'Souza, uh, Hillary's America. Yeah, I would recommend it, people see absolutely everything Dinesh D'Souza ever did. Read everything he's ever written. Watch every movie he's ever done. Every interview he's ever done. He's brilliant. He he. The movie will bring this out, but he got uh, a basic, simple, fundamental explanation of Mrs. Clinton, Barack Obama, and the Democratic Party, and a lot of people on the right too. I don't exonerate the. The Rhino Republicans, nope. uh, when he was in prison for that six or eight months, he was in prison for basically giving more money than he was supposed to give to a, a, a female friend of his who was running for her office. He's the only guy ever been put in jail for that type of a violation. And now he's a, a convicted felon, can't vote. But he talked to the prisoners uh, who were every, everything from um, you know uh, burglars to murderers about – how you pull off a crime, how you pull off a con, and he wrote all this stuff down. It's basically what's, what you see every single day calling out of the mouth of Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama. It's a con job of the, the uh, magnitude that you can't believe. Just unbelievable. They're, they're criminals, Lou. Um, I suspect the number is going to reach an astonishing level as the majority already thinks she should have been indicted for her email activities. And, in my humble opinion, more shoes are about to drop on Mrs. Clinton's neck. Yes, there are some in the Democratic Party with so little moral compass, Lou, they are willing to vote for her anyway, even though she has 
lied to Congress under oath, among many other crimes. What do these people say to their own children, I wonder? But the die is cast. While the jihadist death toll grows across the world every single day because we are engaged in World War III, people. Trust Dr. A on this one subject. Will America trust such a person with the presidency in such a time, such a perilous time for our nation and the continued longevity of us as a free society? Finally, I think no. The answer is no, they will not. That's why I am increasingly convinced that Donald Trump is going to prevail in November. And solidly, the presidency, as I said, uh, of the nomination is his to lose. And I don't think he will lose it. Well, what are your comments on that opening uh, mantra? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just can't imagine all things being equal unless there's massive fraud. Why, how, and and if you look at what's going on with, with the Democrat convention right now, Bernie supporters, the the free trade thing for Trump is going to bring over Bernie supporters. The anti-establishment thing with Trump is going to bring over Bernie supporters, and I think that Democrats are definitely underestimating that. And the sure way to lose anything, whether it's a football game, or a business deal, or a political campaign, is to underestimate your opponent. And I think that's going to be their downfall, so I don't disagree with you. You see why I love her, listeners? That was extremely astute. You do want you do not want to underestimate your opponent. No, and that's, never, that's no. great advice. Great yeah, advice. A battle, you know, a, a military battle. Underestimate your opponent, and you're you're doomed. Exactly. I want to talk a little bit about uh, before I get into uh, talking about uh, the leadership and, and how it's evolved in this country, and uh, how we don't owe them any obedience or loyalty anymore. But Donald Trump's acceptance speech. Uh, at the Republican National Convention last uh, Thursday. Okay, it lasted about six, uh, 76 minutes, and without a doubt, Donald Trump found a way to give what I think is a substantive speech. Uh, yes, it was potentially the longest acceptance speech ever. I'm not sure about that. I don't know my history, but it was very, very long. What was amazing to Dr. A, me, was the, it was the ability of Trump to keep the audience uh, that was in the Cleveland Auditorium there, the uh, Quicken, Quicken Loans Arena, fully engaged and excited for 76 minutes. And furthermore, if you weren't paying attention, a white billionaire guy gave a focused, issue-based, populist message speaking to coal miners uh, and the hopes of inner-city ch- children. Four years ago, Mitt Romney, if you think back at the Republican convention last, uh, last time, Mitt Romney totally failed to connect and never spoke to every segment of our nation. Trump, Lou, did a really solid job of laying out the contrast between himself and Mrs. Clinton. Trump branded, as we know, branded Clinton with his description of her having bought, uh, brought about death, destruction, Uh, terrorism and national weakness. Hillary Clinton will have to go on the defensive, and we've seen that already. Her and uh, her uh, pick, Senator Tim Kaine, have have been on the defensive. And Trump actually did, in my humble opinion, cover many details. Yes, I was surprised. Of course, the challenge now is to build the team, build a ground game, a solid ground game, and then fine-tune that message that was laid out Uh, Thursday in uh, Cleveland. Uh, The RNC convention uh, did have some troubling points. You got to admit that. But you also have to admit that Donald Trump was sort of like Yankee pitcher Mariano Rivera. He closed (laughs) the game and preserved the victory. He's a great closer. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. My favorite pitcher of all time, of course, is Sandy Koufax, if you remember him. Yeah, well, I don't uh, remember him. But. Well, today, today it's uh, Clayton Kershaw. But yeah, Mariano, he, he was just like Mariano Rivera. He closed the game uh, and won. Here's my key observations about what he said uh, at the RNC convention. Trump articulated uh, three main points. Safe neighborhoods, safe and secure borders, and 
protection and victory over terrorism. Now, now tell me, how does one disagree? Any any party you want to go with, political party, how does one disagree with those three focal points, Lou? How, how can you disagree with any of those? Oh, uh, it, it, it's really hard unless you twist his words, which we know Democrats are really good at. But what I believe is that the voting populace, so we have, you know, two groups in, in the United States, people who vote and people who don't vote, right? right. So not right. everyone votes. That's clear. We know that. Well, it's like anywhere from 50 to 60 to 70 percent of the population just will not vote. The 30 percent that do vote, a lot of them have become very savvy about knowing when they're being snowed and twisting someone's words it's is not it, it's it's not always a winning prop, proposition and with those you know 20 30 40 percent that claim or actually are in the independent category they're the ones that really catch you when you're twisting someone else's words so i think that the only thing that they can do is twist his words and I think it's a losing proposition. And you know, I've never been, you know this, I've never been a big fan of Trump the politician. Right. However, I will take Trump the politician, Trump the president, over Hillary Clinton any day of the week. I'm thinking that people in the Philly area that will listen to this radio show today uh, that are uh, leaning left will call Dr. A and Lou and the television, this broadcast we're doing on the radio show, dark. It's dark. <laughs> He's dark. Well, that's what they said about uh, you know, what happened at RNC. It was dark. They're, they're, that's a, just an example of people, what she was just saying. They're going to spin and, and try to get it uh, you know, spun in their direction. Well, we'll it see what dark. happens in Philly this week because it started out pretty doggone dark, and it's going to get darker. It, and first of all, they had to fire their chairman. Yep. And she comes out and, and speaks to her own state. They boo her. I mean, talk about dark. Let it me just tell you something about... It's not looking good for the Democrats right now. Right. Let me tell you something about dark. You know what, folks? One of my mantras is speak the truth, endure the consequences. Sometimes to people that don't want to hear the truth or believe the truth is actually true, that's dark to them. It's rude. It's a slap in the face. I, 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 like I, I it. again, I, I call it mind raped. They've had their minds stolen from them against their will. Yeah. They don't know the difference. They don't understand. They cannot understand the truth because they've been so indoctrinated into believing the crap and the lies that are fed to them daily that they they they're not capable, at least at this point, of able to separate the truth, the real truth, from the lies. So and that's why your- we're doing this show. That's the only reason about a year ago that I was asked to do this show. And I said, if we, if we can teach people the real truth, then I'll do this show. And that's what, hopefully that's what we're doing. And if, Maybe we're getting through to somebody. Right. And if you don't like it, stick your fingers in your ears and say, la, 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 and come back when we're, you think we're not talking about well, something dark. And that is a sure. great segue to our first break, Dr. Ray. Okay, very good. All right. So we'll be right back. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of libertarian conservatism. Where no one is safe, no one is spared, not even the hosts. Oh, that was supposed to be a spin spin cycle. cycle. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round. Self-monitoring Ebola radio strikes again. (laughs) Anyway. 
Anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your rhythm. Let's pop out of the second. <laughs> Find us on Twitter at JD and Stacey. You're listening to K98talk.com. I've seen this happen before. like a disguise when I reveal myself in the light stick around and you might pay the price enough with the questions it's time that we said our goodbyes I knew that this wouldn't be easy try not to tie it down now nothing you say can appease me if you wanted to go then you would have been gone before now Okay, we're back from our break. Uh, before we left on that uh, obscene uh, commercial break, Lou was talking about if you don't like what Dr. A says, just just change the channel and then go do whatever you want to do. I say, hey, you know, if you don't like what I'm saying, what you're hearing from me on WNJC 1360 there in Philly, yes, I invite you to, to, to turn the channel, or turn off the radio, go play Pokemon Go, whatever. That right there illustrates a difference between the Republicans, the conservatives, and the liberal communist progressives. If you don't like what I'm saying, you're welcome to not listen to me. Go somewhere else. That's that's what I tell you. You know what the what the uh, the left says? No. If they don't like what I'm saying, you know what they want to do? They want to shut me up and take me off the air. That's the difference. I believe in the First Amendment, freedom of speech, so much so that if you want to yell and scream about uh, partial birth abortion, even though I just, I think it's disgusting, I give you that right. I don't have to listen to you. I can go somewhere else to play Pokemon Go. But I'm not going to try and shut you up like the left would try to shut Dr. A and Lou up. Now, you just know what, back- just uh, um, to 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 bounce off of that a little bit, and I majored in what you taught in political political science, science. political science, and in uh, international relations. What I learned, I had a wonderful professor in Georgia called uh, Kissel, who's now retired. And uh, he taught me that it is just as important to know your opponent's view very well, as well or better than you know your own. So I want I won't change the channel. I won't put my fingers in my ears and say la 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 when someone I don't agree with is speaking. I will listen to them and I'll listen to them intently because I want to know what they believe. That is the difference between a conservative and a liberal. Correct. Know your enemy. No, well, yeah. Know your opposing view, or you don't know your own very well. I, I don't, I don't uh, say that they have an opposing view. Uh, to me, that's fine. I say that these guys, uh, the, the Democratic, uh, Progressive, Socialist, Communist Party, are enemies of the United States of America. That's They're fine. They're trying to destroy yeah. us. And, and, and I agree. I agree with that because I think we're we're founded on certain principles. And if you don't if you don't believe them, if you oppose them, then yes, you're you're an enemy. However, you know, not everybody yeah. agrees with that. Right. And again, freedom of thought, freedom of speech. I believe right. in it wholeheartedly. It's what we're founded Spe- on. Speaking of speech, let's go back to uh, the RNC tr- Trump acceptance speech. He talked about safe neighborhoods. In that speech, he tied in economic prosperity to a safe neighborhood. In other words, law and order, Lou, we're lacking that right now based on what's going on with all these, these uh, Soros-funded communist organizations like Black Lives Matters. Okay, He emphasized economic prosperity to achieve a safe neighborhood, law and order, not the victim-based welfare nanny state focus uh, of the progressive social, socialist left and Barack Obama and Mrs. Clinton. Early on in the speech, Trump stated, any politician that does not grasp the nature of this clear and present danger, I added clear, clear and present danger, does not deserve to be your president. 
We know that the Democratic Party is one of obfuscation, denial, and lies, outright bold-faced lies when it comes to the safety and security of you listeners, you and your children, and all the American people. They don't care about your national security. All they care about, people trust Dr. Ray on this one subject, all they care about is political power. And there are some on the right and the Republican Party that are the same exact way. Paul Ryan is going to get cantered in his election in Wisconsin because he has shown the people in his district he really doesn't care about them. He panders. He is all about political power. And I believe he'll get cantered just like Eric Cantor did. Uh, I think it was Virginia. No, no, it was Ohio. Uh -uh. Earlier. It was Virginia. Ahead. Earlier, I actually heard some idiot on MSNBC talk about Trump's message as fear-mongering. You know what, people? Tell that to the folks who lost their loved ones in the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. I would say one of the strongest statements came soon after that code pink professional protester was detained. You all probably saw that when he stopped talking. We're kind of looking up to the left uh, in the uh, cheap seats there in the rafters. He said this, an attack on our law enforcement is an attack on all of us. Nothing could be truer than that. That's absolutely true. I've been talking to people. I used to live in New Orleans. I know a lot about uh, the uh, Crescent City and the Bayou State. They're having trouble retaining and hiring law enforcement people. About every third day, one of their, their law enforcement officers quits. They're, they're resigning in droves. And yet then you turn around to Chief Brown in Dallas, who's a, a great man. He said, put in an application, become a member of the Dallas PD. And they suddenly have thousands and thousands of applications that want to work for that man. You know what I'm talking about, Chief Brown there in uh, yes, Dallas? Yes, absolutely. He said, if you don't like the way we're policing your neighborhood, we're hiring. Yeah, and they suddenly get all these applications. He he, uh, like uh, David Clark to me, uh, are uh, quintessential examples of true American heroes. I don't care what color they are. They are real men who are true heroes mm -hmm. and patriots. Law enforcement attack on them is an attack on all of us. You know what, Lou? If there was ever a unifying message, that was it. Yep. That was the unifying message right there. Yep. Consider this. Mrs. Clinton is going to have the mother of Michael Brown, that felon, Michael Brown, speak at the Democratic National Convention. Not members of uh, a slain law enforcement officer uh, along the same lines when Trump told the story of the young lady from Nebraska who was killed by an illegal immigrant. I thought that was a very powerful moment as well. I didn't even remember that. That was a very powerful moment for me personally. Yeah. And he went back and mentioned the three family members from Monday who spoke at the RNC, uh, and those, those people had lost their children to uh, felony acts of illegal immigrants. Again, he drew a clear and distinct contrast. Trump pivoted off the Democrat and Hillary Clinton's support of sanctuary cities to ask the very pertinent question, where was the sanctuary for Kate Steinle? Of course, the left never gave her death attention. You know who Kate Steinle is there in San Francisco? Of course, yeah. She was yeah. killed by an illegal immigrant when she was she was on a pier with her father, just, you know, on a, a day off, just chilling with her dad. And a, a guy walks up with a gun and just shoots her. No a a five-time deported. Five times five deported. Five-time deported illegal alien. Yep. Let back, back in the country. Mm-hmm. Trump, in his speech to accept the nomination of the Republican Party, also addressed how illegal immigration has hurt the black and Hispanic community. This was truth, not pandering. Not pandering, it was truth. And he finally gave the reason for a border security wall to end the drugs, to end the gangs, and to end the violence that plagues our border and our, our southern cities. And he has staked out the position of being a law and order president of the United States. I think that's very powerful, uh, especially with, with what's going on right now. I said this is going to be a, na a national security election, not just defending from international foreign enemies, but defending us, we the people, from 
heinous domestic enemies as well, of which there are many, Lou. What do you think about that? Uh, do we have domestic enemies? Of course we do. We have. We just talked about the two that we have in the White House. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And uh, he took an oath to he took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Uh, he, he's supposed to defend the nation against himself, but he's not doing that. Furthermore, Mr. Trump spoke to he actually spoke to our urban communities, our urban communities. Uh, this uh, current Obama administration, he said, has failed America's inner cities. How has he failed us? Failed them? He's failed the inner cities in education, in jobs, and in crime. He said, I will fight to ensure that kids, and he specifically mentioned Baltimore, Chicago, and I think he mentioned Ferguson. He's going to say, fight to ensure that those kids are treated and protected equally. Trump said he would rescue inner city kids from those failing schools and offer them a choice. Got to tell you all, I was there for many years and saw some of these inner city schools, and I remember... Um, Mitt Romney, he never said anything whatsoever like that. Trump, Lou, was effective in bringing to our attention that it is not the free market that's failed, crony capitalism has failed. And that's what Karl Marx said. Crony capitalism would eventually fail and crumble the, the uh, capitalist societies, which would make them right for the communists coming in, come in and take over. Yeah. In, in a very honest statement, I hope, don't know if you remember this. In a very honest moment during that speech, Donald Trump said this about crony capitalism. He said, I know that system, alluding to his own personal dealings with politicians. So, in essence, he admitted what he's done as a businessman in the past. And therefore, he argued that he is more qualified to fix this corrupt uh, and crony capitalist system that has developed in the United States of America. That allowed Trump to state with strength, he said this, I am your voice. Again, here's a billionaire white guy speaking to every corner of America to stop being victims, to stop being loser parasites, to pick yourself up by the bootstraps like all, all good Americans used to do and seek to achieve your goals, your end. And uh, this was interesting because that's sort of what, uh, like what Bernie Sanders is talking about as well. But you know what? I always teach my students and my children this. If you want something out of life, grab it by the throat and wrestle it to the ground until it submits. Don't let anything or anybody prevent you from achieving your goals in life. Most of all, yourself. Now, I don't mean physically grab somebody and choke them, hurt, harm somebody else. I'm just, as an uh, aggressive uh, former naval aviator attack pilot, I can't help but be aggressive. And I'm telling you, go aggressively after your goals. Will you need some help along the way? Sure. But it's going to be because of your own hard work and your own volition and motivation that you achieve your goals. There's maybe somebody along the line is going to give you a hand up, help you here, uh, you know, talk to you when you're down, you're feeling sad, accept that help. But it's going to be on your own volition and hard work that you achieve these goals. And don't let your own self prevent you from achieving those goals. What do you think of that advice? Lily? I think it's I think it's great advice. I think um, it, it's funny. I've had an experience with that in the past week. And, um, you know, just in the situation where I could have curled up into the fetal position and given up, or I could have taken some information that was given to me and fought back and i chose the latter uh my wench does not crawl up into a curl up in a field position <laughs> she's a fighter folks I could have. She's a fighter. <laughs> it occurred to me but um i refused to do it yeah you know what during that speech for, for those of you who criticized trump for his position on a what they call it a muslim ban he clarified he said any belief that endorses violence hatred and oppression is not welcome in America. Now, that would be Black Lives Matter. That would be George Soros. That would be uh, Code Pink. That would be the Islamic terrorists. That should be a premise anyone in America can embrace, fully embrace, and agree with. And again, it puts Islamic fascists on the defensive. And, and ponder this. When was the last time you heard Barack Obama refer to ISIS as barbarians? Trump used that word, and I was I I, I I jumped up out of my easy chair and said, "Yes, yes, that's exactly what they are. They're barbarians." Trump 
did show humility. I know this is going to amaze you. Really amazing. When he mentioned, he mentioned that the endorsement that he received from the evangelical Christians, he, he thanked them, but he was not deserving of it. Uh, seemingly, he did come full circle and admit his past sins and mistakes right there. He appeared to grasp the concept of God's grace and offered the pastors freedom of speech by promising to revisit the 1954 Senator Lyndon Johnson Amendment, uh, which said they can't talk about politics if they want to remain you know, uh, with their status as being tax-free. To me, that is huge for the evangelicals. Another thing he talked about was, and how could you not agree with this, fixing the TSA, Trump's first 100-day plan to eliminate Wasteful government programs, Lou, is needed and must be done. We didn't hear that from Romney four years ago or from the, from the Democrats first night in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I worked in the federal government my, almost my entire, well, I guess my entire life. Now I'm training Air Force guys to go to war and, and Army guys, Navy guys. So I worked in and for the federal government my whole life. I know the Pareto principle is alive and well. 80% of the people that work in the federal government are incompetent to do the job that they're currently in. But the 20% uh, above that are highly competent and, and make up for that lack of competence in the other 80%. And there are programs that need to be eliminated, just totally eliminated to make our government smaller, shrink in size, as Ronald Reagan taught us. You love that guy. I do too. Uh-huh. And, and make our government uh, and our society work, work much more efficiently, shrink the size of the government, get rid of these federal organizations that don't need to exist and are just basically incompetent and gumming up the works. What do you think of that? I think you're absolutely right. But before people get the idea that you're a bureaucrat, I, I, I want to point out that those that's not the only thing that you've done. You've also worked in the private sector. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, Trump also clarified two points. I think they're key points. Trade, where he stated no more than uh, no more of these one thousand page trade agreements that are you know negotiated in secret and then lied about to the American people. Uh, but he said what we will do is individual trade agreements with with individual countries. I like that idea. Mm-hmm. And two, we talked about NATO. Uh, I know JD's not going to like this, but uh, the North American Trade uh, tr- uh, North American uh, Treaty Organization, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. He explained how American security protection is no longer free of charge. They're not really paying what they should be paying. The United States, just like with the UN, uh, with NATO, we pick up the lion's share uh, of the financial responsibility, and it's, it's really not fair. I mentioned this on a show a couple of weeks ago about the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. I said if Russia attacked some small NATO uh, alliance, uh, you know, ally, would Barack Obama do what he's supposed to do according to those treaties? My answer was I didn't think he would. Well, I, I want to point out Turkey. So, I, it, you know, I have a lot of um, love and, well, a lot of, a lot of respect for NATO, what it's been in the past, especially during the Cold War. But, you know, I mean, just look at Turkey. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's, that's all you, that's my one word answer when somebody says, but NATO, I say, but Turkey. Exactly. They're, they're a member of NATO. Mm-hmm. You know, there can be no debate uh, that expectations were probably pretty low for Donald Trump's acceptance speech last Thursday evening there in Cleveland. Uh, but in my humble opinion, he exceeded and went uh, above and beyond. Uh, I'm not about to drink the Kool-Aid. You know that I voted for Ted Cruz. I did. Um, I will thump Trump when he screws the pooch. When he needs to be criticized, I will step up and tell the truth. But I think he did a good job, very good job, in closing out that RNC convention. We have existed over the past seven and a half years, Lou, in abject fear with a chief executive who began apologizing for our nation. You know what, Lou? The United States doesn't need to apologize to anybody, anybody. And there's no doubt that the new American Socialist Party's nominee, Mrs. Clinton, would do no better than Barack Obama. In fact, in my humble opinion, she'll do much worse. She, she'll give more reset buttons to give our enemies uh, and to whom which we should not empathize. She'll give them reset buttons like she did uh, you know, with Russia. But if there's one thing we Americans love, and Patton talked about this, we love a winner. Americans play to win 
all the time. I wouldn't give a hoot in hell for somebody that tried and lost. Americans love its champions, like those Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James and the rest of those guys. Trump said in his speech to the, he's talking to the world, not just Americans or those uh, delegates in, in Cleveland. America is back, bigger, better, and stronger with him in the White House. That feels good because we deserve a real champion's trophy, Lou, not the silly plastic trinket participation trophy that those knucklehead liberals want to give everybody. I, Dr. A gave Trump an A-plus on his presidential acceptance speech. Now he has to go out there and follow up on what he said last Thursday. And you know what, Lou? That, in the end, is the ultimate challenge of any leader in any leadership uh, endeavor. What do you think about that? I think that's great. And I think that um, before we segue into our last segment, which I'm assuming today will also be news, I'd like to give him an A plus on his choice of vice presidential running mates as well. Tell tell the people who he chose and why do you say Mike that? Pence and Mike Pence. Um, because he has a great record as governor of Indiana because of what he did with the um, with his unemployment rate, because of what he did to promote business in Indiana, because mostly because of his economic policies, because of his history and experience in government because he covers a lot of the weaknesses that Trump has. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. fills in those blanks that Trump and, and just as he started to talk to Mike Pence and Pence obviously started to have influence over him. He became more focused. He became more policy oriented and he makes more sense. So you know, you're think you're you're, you're thinking that he kind of filled out any weaknesses or a bunch of the weaknesses that might be perceived by people out there that were sitting on the fence for Donald Trump. Well, you think his selection not, of right, not just Mike perceived, Pence does that? Not just perceived. I think I think Trump had a lot of weaknesses from his delivery, you know, to the way he approached a lot of things, and I think that Pence is already having influence on him and softening his delivery. And expanding his knowledge of policy and focusing him on what policies should actually be. So, yeah, I give him kudos for his choice and for allowing his choice to have influence on him and what he's doing and what his plans are. So, I'll give him kudos for that. Very good. I like that. It's a good, good analysis. Yeah, thank you. All right, right you ready for a break? to get a break and, and come back and do some uh, news? Okay, very good. All right, we'll be right back. I looked all over, so how can it be? Here comes the wrecking ball. Swinging at me. K98 Talk is continuing to expand its lineup. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget. Web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. Music for Wake Up America Radio is provided by Tennessee Jed, whose new CD, Stronger, is available on iTunes. Hey, we're back, folks. Uh, WNJC, 1360 AM in Philadelphia, and K98 Talk with Wake Up America Radio uh, with Dr. Randy Arrington. And by the way, Lou Esposito. And by the way, Lou Esposito, that's my new first name, by the way. 
<laughs> Wench, Wench is here too. You know, <laughs> uh, those of you who just listen to those two segments, uh, I count on her. She is fantastic with her analysis. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, news right now. We kind of interspersed that with uh, the first two segments, obviously, but uh, I, I want to go back to this. Uh, you know, um, I, I've been teaching you guys for a long time now. The world is at war. We are at war with Islam. And it seems like, Lou, every single day now or every other day, there is another uh, Muslim terrorist attack somewhere in the world. I mean, the latest one, I think, what I just read this morning like when I woke up to prepare for the show was in Normandy, France. They, they And it's funny, they, the uh, news Mogadishu outlets say that... was the that, last one. Normandy was what, the next to the last one. Okay, so they so they say that uh, two uh, Islam Muslims uh, came in, shouting Allahu Akbar, uh, and uh, you know Daesh, Daesh, whatever they call it, ISIS, ISIL, whatever they call those guys, uh, and they said they cut the throat of an 84 year old uh, priest. No, they cut his head off. They yeah. decapitated him. People, why don't you tell the truth? And then they had about eight or nine uh, parishioners in there held hostage. And I think they killed a nun, had two nuns that held, held hostage. So every day now, folks, uh, we've, we've got a, a new terrorist attack. We are at war. Why can't you understand this, politicians and people? People need to force the politicians to declare war and go in patent on their rear ends and stop this. That's the only way you're going to defeat them. Jefferson, President Jefferson, our third president had to deal with this, the Barbary Coast. That's why he called them barbarians. They were uh, the Muslims were were seizing our American ships and killing the people and taking their and enslaving them, taking our treasure. And he had to stop it. Yep. Sent the Marines to go get it to go get, get and kill he them. War. That's the only way. Only way you stop them. Yep. And they declared war. Get, they declared war on them. You're you're not going to give them job. You're not going to give them a nice house to live in rent free. You're not going to give them a, a, a good piece of meat, uh, whatever they may eat these days. I guess they eat beef. Uh, you're going to go in and kill them in a significant amount of numbers, brutally, to make yes. them stop doing what they're doing. I'm sorry if that offends you, anybody out there in Philadelphia or Delaware or wherever you're listening, but that's what you got to do. If somebody has a gun pointed at your face, what will you do? Will you just give up and say, shoot me, or will you fight to preserve your own life? And if you fight to preserve your own life, that means you're going to have to stop that individual from doing what they're doing that's threatening your life. And that might indeed be to kill that individual. What well, do you think about that, Well, people should remember, you, uh, they, they, some people may think that you were making a joke about you know, giving, giving them a, a job and a nice place to live. But the, some Democrats actually suggested that that is the problem with radical Islam is that – they they're they're poor they need somewhere to live you know they're they're they need it's an economic challenge and not a not an ideological challenge they only want to kill us because they're economically challenged which is crazy i want to know i'm now i'm, I'm talking to you uh if you're listening out there uh on wnjc or k98 talk i'm talking to you liberal Parents out there, mom and dad, liberals, die hard. I'm going to vote for Obama uh, or Hillary, whoever is on the ticket, die hard. What would you do if the current immigration policies brought a whole bunch of Syrian refugees, Islamic refugees, to live in your neighborhood? And about six or eight of these Muslim thugs grabbed your 12-year-old daughter and raped her. What would you do? I know what I would do. What would you do, mom and pop liberal Democrat, if they harmed your daughter? This is happening every – this is not a joke. This is happening every single day. These Muslim thugs, because of their ide- their warped ideology, which comes, I say, from Satan himself, from Satan himself. They are emiss- – Muhammad was an emissary of Satan, and he's fooled 1.6 billion people into believing that this is a religion. It's well, he not. was a pedophile. That's well documented. It, it's an ideology of brutal control over human behavior and thought that is masquerading as a religion and has fooled 1.6 billion people. What would you do if they harmed your daughter and raped her over and over and over again, left her bloodied, maybe dead in the street? Lou, this is happening every day in Sweden right now. Sweden! I've met Swedish people. Sweden I've met Swedish Germany, girls. They're beautiful. Sweden and Germany are two 
places where it's extremely prevalent, it's a huge problem. The, the, these 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 politicians like Obama, Clinton, Merkel are bringing these people in, thinking maybe that they're solving the refugee crisis and they're being compassionate. No, they're being stupid, bringing these but animals let me just say in, something about a changing refugee. their nation. While we're debating this, let me just say something about a refugee. Unless a refugee has some sort of nefarious reason that they'd like to come to your country, what they want more than anything, and this has been proven through interviews that the International Red Cross has done, Amnesty International has done over and over and over again, what they want more than anything is for their country to be fixed and for them to go home. They don't want to come to America. They don't want to come to a strange land. They don't want to be shipped over here in mass and be the you know basically pariahs wherever they come. It's difficult. I've worked with refugees in this area. It's no fun for them. It's it's a difficult existence to live and it's hard on them they would much rather have their country fixed and go home and be home where they're comfortable why this program or these programs were ever instituted in in the first place well you can debate that all day long you can thank the UN for it but it's insane fix what's going on in their country and send them home. I agree. And, and Trump has said that too. A lot of the, the people on the conservative side have said, let's do what America has done from our very existence. You know, we started back in 1776 when we broke away, uh, had the first Brexit uh, and, and became a free nation. We've helped other nations uh, secure their own liberty when it was threatened. And so why not go uh, declare war against these, these animals, beat them, get unconditional surrender, and then create safe zones, safe uh, parts of the Middle East of these countries, and let these people go back to their home and live and prosper and thrive in their home countries. Absolutely. And you know what? With that, we got to go. You know what, people? Let freedom ring. God help us. And always, always speak the truth and then endure the consequences. So long. So long. Have a great week. You can catch us 1360 a.m. and out of Philadelphia, Tuesdays at 5 p.m., Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on K98talk.org. We'll see you next week. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street Casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. Wake Up America Radio on WNJC is part of the Conservative Commando Radio Network.